now, but what do we do to inspire others? Well, you just laid it out. I would say it's like, you know, one of the things that you, you pull out of the clinical literature, imagine that you have children who have a certain low-level amount of neurological trouble when they're infants. So something's gone wrong, maybe a little oxygen deprivation at birth, something like that. Something's gone a little bit wrong with their neurological development. Assuming that the damage isn't too severe, those children will stabilize and normalize if they have at least one well-put-together role model in their life. And so, one of the things that you do, if you want to inspire others, is get your act together. Because you inspire most through example. It's more, much more powerful than, than words. Words are very powerful if they're also accompanied by example. But the best thing you can do is start putting things together around you. There's plenty of things to put together. It's a good meditative exercise, you know, if you're... And I think this is the proper form of prayer, let's say, assuming that there is such a thing. A proper form of prayer would be if you're not happy with your life, if you're miserable, you sit on the edge of your bed and you think, is there anything I can change in what I'm doing that is going to make this less awful than it has to be? Less awful than it might be? You have to ask that you know, with intent. And generally speaking, you'll get an answer almost immediately. There's something that you could put right that day that would make things slightly better than they are. And that's rule four, which is compare yourself to who you were, yet, to who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. There, I don't believe that there's a person who exists, who wouldn't receive an answer to that question if they genuinely asked it, and it's no different really than thinking. Like, if you think, you have a problem, you think, you get an answer. It might not be the right answer, but obviously you get an answer, and you might think, well, I thought up that answer. It's like, well, that's really not much of an explanation, because you don't know how you think. It's like, I'm sitting there, and thoughts appear in my head, and that's how I think. It's like, that's a pretty shallow explanation. It's not much different than revelation. It's like you ask yourself the proper questions, you'll get the proper answers. But if you ask the right question, and you want the answers, right? And those are not easy preconditions to set up, because who knows, you know, if, if you're sitting on the edge of your bed thinking, okay, what am I doing wrong? That's a hell of a question to ask. You know, because if you really want to know, you'll find out. And then you'll find out that you really didn't want to know. Because generally speaking, finding out what you're doing wrong is not a pleasant experience, and it means that you have to sacrifice part of yourself. Usually a burned out, stupid, bitter, corrupt, arrogant, nasty, vengeful part of yourself, but nonetheless, part that you like. And so, so you can, I think that room for those incremental improvements exists within everyone's grasp. And, and I think that it's a humble thing to do, to ask how you could improve incrementally without interfering with anyone else, like it's your problem, not theirs. But I think that the consequences of maintained incremental improvement are anything but incremental. You get compound interest on incremental improvement. You know, there's another rule in the New Testament called the Matthew Principle. It's, economists use it, and the rule is, to those who have everything, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, everything will be taken. It's an actually a description of the way the world works, interestingly enough. You know that if you've ever played Monopoly, because that's what happens if you play Monopoly. And, and there's a reason for that, that's a deep reason. But what, and it's a very harsh rule, because it means as you start to wander off the path, let's say, the probability that you will wander further off the path increases non-linearly. And that's a terrible thing to know. As you wander towards the edge, the probability that you'll fall off the cliff increases. And that's a statistical justification for the concept of hell. But as you improve, the probability that each improvement will produce a further improvement increases. And so, perhaps the, the downside is the cataclysmic catastrophe that you can engage upon if you reproduce your moral failings, but the upside is that each improvement produces 
an increment in the probability of the next improvement. And I've seen that. It's a truism among behavioral psychologists. I mean, although they don't generally phrase it that way. If you're a behavioral psychologist, and I am a behavioral psychologist, what you do is you find out what, essentially, you help per a person establish their aim. Then you break down what they're trying to do into attainable units, and you negotiate with them. You say, well, look, you know, um, well, I'm not they say, I'm not making use of my time very well, spending three hours a day playing video games. And you say, well, okay, hypothetically, how much time would you like to spend playing video games? And they say, well, I could probably spend an hour a day without it interfering with the rest of my life. Which is kind of the issue, right? Because if you play video games, fine, but maybe three hours means that you're not doing your homework or something, and that's not a good game. So you say, okay, well, I want to play for an hour a day. It's like, okay, well, can you shift to an hour a day right now? And this is supposed to be an honest conversation. And the person says, no, I've tried that lots of times. Every time I try, I just fail. And so you don't say, well, quit failing, go play one hour a day, and the problem will be solved. That's a stupid strategy. You say, okay, well, look, you think about this, and don't agree to do this unless you think you will do it, because otherwise it's just a waste of both of our times. It's like, do you think that you could track how much time you spend playing video games for one week? Don't change anything. Just track it. And they think, yeah, I could probably do that, but I might miss a couple of days. And you think, okay, fine. So here's the deal. Five out of the next seven days, you just track how much time you spend playing video games. And the person says, I think I can do that. Because that's what you want them to say. You want them to succeed at the improvement. It's not much of an improvement, but it's something, right? Then they come back and they say, well, yeah, I was playing about four hours a day. And so you say, okay, well, fine, good work, man. You've got a track. Now we know, what, we know the parameters of your problem. It's actually a little worse than you thought, but at least you had enough sense to measure it. We know where you're at. Okay, do you think you could cut that down to three and a half hours every day? And the person thinks, mm, no, I'm pretty weak-willed. I don't think I could manage that. <laughs> you say, well, how about this? Do you think that two of the next seven days you can only play for three hours? You think you can manage that? And you don't, you're not cynical about this. You're not insulting the person, any of that. It's like, because you don't care. All you care is that they make some incremental movement towards their goal. And the person thinks about that, if they have any sense, and they take their weakness into account, and they think, I think I could probably do that. And then they come back the next week, and they say, I managed to spend three hours a day playing video games for three days, and the rest were four hours. And you say, good work, man. You've just got rid of 25%, 12.5% of your problem. You're one-eighth of the way to fixing it in one week. And you know, the person isn't going to be all that thrilled with themselves because they don't do the arithmetic they do, and they don't do the projection. They think, well, I'm still pretty damn useless. I'm playing 25 hours worth of video games a week. It's nothing to pat myself on the back for. It's like, yes, it is. It's definitely, it's a marked, measurable improvement and it's a move in the right direction. You know, and then you say, okay, well, on the days you succeeded, how did you manage to succeed? And is there a way that you could do it for four days next week? How about that? Or, or maybe you could even try five days. Do you think you could do that? And then you also tell the person, look, the other thing you've got to understand is you're not going to improve like this. You're going to improve like this. So some weeks you're going to come back and say, geez, I backslid completely and I like, played for four hours a day for seven days. But it doesn't matter because that doesn't mean you failed. It just means that you slid back. You want to calculate it over a month or something like that. And, you know, generally speaking, a month later, the person's down to something like two hours a day, and you've figured out ways of filling their time in with something productive otherwise, and, and they're on their way. And the general consequence of that is that every time they manage an accomplishment, they get a little stronger in character, they get a little bit more confident in their ability, they get a little bit less racked with self-disgust, they get a little bit more hopeful about the future, and they get more confident that they can make another change. And if you're patient, and you have to be patient with yourself that way, it's like you reward those incremental improvements and you don't get all cynical about them, and you think, okay, just imagine what would happen if you kept doing that every week for 10 years. 
And the answer to that is, things would be so much better for you that you can't even imagine it with that much improvement, or maybe even with half that much improvement. And so that's a, that's a very good way of progressing. So.